Hi there, my name's Kayleigh and today I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques for using charcoals. Um, so it's completely suitable for beginners or if you've got a little bit more experience then you might pick up something new as well. Um, so we've got two main techniques overall in how to pull together a charcoal picture. Um, I've got some still life in front of me, just a couple of pieces of fruit um, and you can follow along with me, it'll be totally step by step, but obviously um, if you want to use your own still life you can set something up in front of you and we'll look at all the lights, the shades, uh, cast shadows um, and different types of charcoal you can use as well. So I'll start off the video just showing you a few different ways on how to use your charcoal and different types of shading, blending um, and highlighting things as well. Um, all I've got in front of me just now is a piece of paper. I've got a cartridge um, paper in front of me which has got a little bit of texture to it but if you've only got plain paper at home or a bit of cardboard even the back of a cereal box works really well um, with your charcoal then just grab whatever you've got around. Um, I've got some willow charcoal. Now willow charcoal is a little bit softer than a compressed charcoal um, and I find it's a bit easier to start off with. It smudges a lot easier which has got its pros and cons but um, it does all blend really well together so I tend to use willow charcoal whenever I'm doing anything um, but if you've got compressed charcoal which might look a little bit like this um, I've got a few of those as well so you get kind of hard ones soft ones and medium ones so if you've got those in front of you as well then they will work um, fine and we'll go over a little bit of your pros and cons of using a compressed charcoal versus your willow charcoal so I've just got lots of different sizes of charcoal too. Um, so these are all willow ones and I've got a, a big one, medium one and a wee thin one as well. In fact, I think this is an even finer one. Um, always good to have a few things in front of you, just depending on how much detail you're going to put in. Um, and I've got an old rag. So this is just an old bit of t-shirt that I've cut up. Um, if you don't have any old rags lying about, a bit of kitchen roll or something will do fine as well. Um, and if you've got fancy like blending sticks, cotton buds, anything like that, they're all really, really handy to use as well. Um, so just whatever you've got. But I'm going to turn my camera around and you'll be able to see up close how I'm going to create a charcoal picture. So with your charcoal, um, choose any size that you fancy to start off with. Um, I'll go for a reasonably big one just now. And I like to break mine down into little tiny bits just because they're a little bit easier to hold. Um, and first off, just try it out on the page, see what you think. Um, it'll be a little bit soft, it'll go easy um, on because it's willow charcoal. Um, but you've also got your compressed one, which is not quite. So try them both out. So with your willow one, just try a couple of layers. See how well it goes on top. You'll see some of your texture of your paper come through as well. Um, if you were wanting to try a compressed one, you'll see that it is a lot lighter. Um, it goes on, it's much harder as well to sort of get coverage, um, but much more precise. Um, so even line-wise, it's just that little bit more precise than if you were to use the willow one. So just have a little experiment first to try it out. Um, never go straight in with something and try and draw something straight away. It's all about just having a little bit of an experiment. There are also different ways that you can shade using your charcoal, so it's important to kind of try those out as well. So your first um, technique is called layering. And layering is where you go over lightly and then you use the same weight with your hand to go over again to darken it. And then you can go over it again, darken it again and over again and just keep darkening it. And you'll see the more, the more layers you've got on, the darker it'll be. So I've got more layers up the top and only one down the bottom here. You get this lovely gradient by just layering up a few different bits. You can also practice doing gradients just with pressure from your hand. So you can start really hard and then try and loosen the grip a little bit, less pressure until it comes to really, really light. So you want it going from dark to light. So even just try that a couple of times and just work with the pressure of your hand and practice that. You can also work light to dark as well, so you could start really light and get darker and darker until it's really, really dark. So this is going to help practice before you start off. So anytime you're about to do a charcoal picture, it's always an idea just to practice getting the pressure of your hand right. And you'll see that actually they get better. The more you do it, the better you get. Um, even if you've done it, like I do a lot of charcoal, um, 
but still just starting out on one day the more you do it the better it gets so you've got your layering you've got your gradients that you can practice um, and you've got a couple of other ones as well so you've got smudging uh, smudging is where you put on your charcoal as many layers as you like and then you use something to smudge it um, I'm using an old t-shirt which works quite well if you've not got that you could use a bit of kitchen roll or toilet roll that works as well you can use your finger but the finger will transfer oils from your hand onto your page so it's always a good idea if you can to try not touch your page too much and also to use something else to blend in so you'll see that it gives it that lovely smudgy texture um, and if you were to say we were drawing a circle and we wanted it all sort of shaded in you can use that to sort of smudge your circle there you go so you can get rid of these harsh lines just by using your rag and the more layers you put on top the more you can sort of smudge in as well um, so if you wanted that side a little bit darker you can add your other layer smudge in again um, add another layer smudge in again and you'll see that this is a little bit darker to this one so the more layers the more smudging the the nicer and smoother the blend you'll get although one thing you have to be aware of is don't go too smudgy with absolutely everything or you'll lose all depth in your picture so you'll end up not being able to actually it, it will look too flat it won't look alive or anything if you do find that you've done that and you've reached a really kind of flat point in your picture a way to get back is to use shading such as cross hatching so cross hatching is where you've got lines going in one direction and then lines going in the other direction and you can shade in like this if you're to look at comic books they use a lot of cross hatching in theirs um, and personally i love it i think it works really well so the closer your lines are the darker that area will be so if you go really close together and then you get further apart like this you'll notice that this side here we've got the most concentrated lines is darker than this bit here so if you were to let's say this was a rectangle and this just looked too flat and you wanted this side to be darker you can always add in a little bit cross hatching like that on one side and it'll just darken everything up and it takes a wee bit of practice because especially if you're a bit of a control freak and you don't like to you like to know where things are happening with your picture it looks quite messy to start off with um, but once you actually put this in so for example when we're going to be drawing the fruit um, having a bit of cross hatching at the side of like the apple here will give that real darkness without leaving it too flat and smudgy so I definitely recommend doing a little bit of um, cross hatching and you can go in loads and loads of different directions as well do you know the darker you want it the more directions you can go in but it will look a little bit messier you've got other shading techniques as well I mean there's there's tons we could go through but these are your sort of main ones so your layering your gradients your smudging your cross hatching and then you can do a bit of stippling as well stippling is where you've got lots of little dots and the more concentrated they are together the darker the area so the more you've got up here and the closer they'll sit look at that there you go so you've got lots and lots so when you come down it's getting a lot lighter so this is something we could use on the line here because it's got lots of dimples all over it and um, you could have lots and lots of little dots at one side and less at the other and that is your main techniques and um, you can try these as well if you've just used as I've done I've used a willow charcoal for all of these if you do want to try doing them all with the compressed charcoal as well you can you can see how more defined the, the compressed charcoal is compared to the willow charcoal so if you're wanting to get lots of little details I would definitely recommend using your compressed instead this is a compressed one which is soft um, but this one is actually hard so you'll see again the difference between those two and you can still do your layering as well it still works it's just not as instant and not smudgy um, you can get your gradients going as well gradients work with this like that um, or light to dark as well okay. 
Um, with your smudging, it's not quite as easy. It still works, but not, I'm sorry, I shouldn't use my finger. Um, but there we go. It works, but not quite as well. The softer the charcoal, the easier it'll be to smudge. See that smudging a little bit better, but it's not as good as smudging your willow charcoal. The last technique I'm going to show you with um, all our shading and highlights here is to use your rubber. Um, so if we were to draw this in like this, just give it a wee shade, blow it off a little bit, um, and then use your rubber. Now practice using your rubber as a highlighter. Um, so for example, if we were to draw the moon in the sky, we could use the rubber to draw an actual circle in the middle here. And there we go. So that's actually using your rubber to your advantage there. Um, you can use it for highlights on anything. Um, for example, if we were doing it on the circle here or on a rectangle, um, then you can actually just use your rubber. And you can use the same sort of techniques as well, you know, with a bit of cross hatching, um, a bit of stippling if you wanted some stars. Um, there's lots of ways to use your rubber and we'll be doing that in the fruit as well. So the first way we're going to try it is really, really straightforward. We are just going to grab a bit of willow charcoal and we're going to start sketching. Um, so the most important thing to do when you're setting this up is have a light that's directly above it. Um, so I'm in a reasonably dark room with one main source of light and all that does is it helps me see all my highlights really pop out and all the shadows really fall back here. And it makes your picture much more dramatic and to be honest a little bit easier to draw as well. Um, so when you're doing it, make sure you've got some lovely cast shadows. So that's the shadow that is on the ground here, um, underneath. And also some shadows maybe from where the fruit's sitting on top of another piece of fruit. Um, and some nice overlap. A good tip with composition is to always use either three, five, seven, any sort of odd number of fruits or whatever if you're using flowers or fruits or any still life use an odd number um, it's just a lot nicer for the viewer um, and it works with our brains really well um, and another tip with your composition if you wanted to sort of off center it you can do your rule of thirds and things then that's fine as well we're not really going to go into that today this is more about um, getting your shades and highlights in so don't worry too much about that let's just go smack bang in the center today um, unless you want to, to try something a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to do is just mark in roughly where the end of my table is. Um, and this just grounds our picture straight off. So this, I'm drawing this line at the back here. Oh, move that. Just the line at the back, just to see where it is. And keep it nice and light and sketchy. It'll probably change towards the end. With charcoal, you want lots of little bits flying everywhere. Um, it just gives it more texture. I'm going to start with my apple um, and my apple's going to sit a little bit like this or you can just draw it in just keep looking up you want to keep looking at the shapes that you're drawing it sort of goes down in here and a little bit of a stalk and probably goes a wee bit more like that I'm quite happy with that. Then I'm going to mark in where our banana sits. So the banana is in relation to the apple. It sort of comes out about halfway here, just out a little bit. And then you've got the stalk coming towards. Like this. And don't worry too much about any shades and highlights and things just now. Um, we'll get those afterwards. We're just roughly drawing it in. The banana then kind of comes around the back here. You don't see it. Um, and out here. And then back up. Like this. There you go. And I'm just sort of rubbing out any wee bits I don't need along the way. Um, we can get a wee bit tidier with that later on. Yeah, we've got a wee bit of a line that comes up like this and a wee one across the top as well. And it comes down into here. There we go. And then a lime. So the lime is sitting just above the apple 
add on top of the banana here, like this, and it's very round. The lime's really quite round. Oh, so we've got our three pieces of fruit all marked in now. Um, so spend a little bit longer if you need to as well. You can always pause this video and catch up. Um, I'm just going to show you some rough techniques. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of smudging out any lines that I don't need. Go. And I don't mind if it's a little bit messy. I embrace the mess with charcoal. Um, and then we want to start shading. You want to go straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just mark in where my cast shadow is because, to be honest, I find that the easiest thing to do. And it sort of goes right the way along here, the bottom of the banana, and then the apple's shadow comes all the way out like this. And I'm just using the same pressure on my charcoal the whole way around. And a bit in here. And we can always go a little bit darker later on. If you start off light, it's easier to go darker than the opposite way around. The cast shadow of the lime is actually on the banana. Here. Comes right under. Um, and then this bit of the banana down here is quite dark. So this is just marking in where the dark bits and light bits are. As simple as that. If you're struggling to see where the dark and light bits are, try squinting your eyes. Um, you'll feel a wee bit strange, but if you squint your eyes, you'll really see the highlights pop out and you'll see the darker bits fall back. Um, and so this side of the lime is a lot darker. You can just bring that lime down a wee bit to make it look like it's more sitting on the banana and it's not floating. The banana comes out a wee bit more that way. There we go. Um, this bit of the banana is the darkest, so let's mark that in really dark because it's one of the darkest pieces of the picture. Another dark bit is going to be right up the front, round about here as well. That's one of the darkest bits. So you can blow away any little bits of charcoal. If you've also got like a a feathery brush, you can rub some of it away, but just watch you don't smudge it too much. Uh, I'm then going to shade in this side of the apple, um, is the darkest, so let's get that shaded in. And this side is really, really light, so we probably want to just keep it as it is. Um, but it is a little bit darker in this sort of well here. So we've got a couple of wee darker bits coming down. But overall, it's this side here, isn't it? I'm just going to mark that a wee bit darker. So just keep looking around your picture. And this is using the layering technique of shading, where you are going to shade a little bit darker, a little bit darker again, wherever it is dark. And the more layers you put on, the darker it will get. This bit under here is really quite dark again. Bring it out if you need to. And this bit in here too. There we go. So we've now got a still life of a fruit. And there's a bit of shadow that comes out the back here as well. Shadow this comes out a little bit too. There we go. Now I'm just going to smudge in any bits um, that I feel could do with a wee bit of smudging. If it's looking a bit harsh or you just want a nicer blend. Um, also some of your cast shadows might need a wee bit of a, a blend out as well. But the important thing is not to go overboard with this. There we go. 
and you want to make sure it looks like the banana is all the way around the back here in the layer. And then if you want to go in um, and get some cross hatching in, have a little practice of that, especially on the apple here. Might have a wee bit of cross hatching coming down just to darken it. Looks quite subtle. Um, even on the line as well. Might have a few wee bits cross hatch here eh, and cross hatch here as well. If you need to sharpen up any lines, you can too. Now, there's a big highlight right up on top of this bit of the line, which I've left white. Um, if you've not left it white, you can always use your rubber to rub those little bits out. I'm just going to add in a few little dimples with my finest bit of charcoal. So that it looks like the line has dimples in it. stalk of the apple needs to poke out a little bit. Oh. And that so it's pretty much there and the last thing you'll do is just use your rubber to rub out any wee bits that you want to make it any more precise um, or any highlights. So for example, there is a big highlight on the apple right here. So I'm just going to use my rubber to get there and then around the back. Then on the banana, there is a highlight that comes all the way up here like that. And all the way up here as well. And darken that bit and rub that weave out, which I didn't mean to. Um, and a little highlight here and here. So just work your way around your picture and start marking in where you see any highlights um, that maybe you've filled in or you just need to make more precise. You can even go around. So the outside of this line is really crisp, really crisp line. And round about the apple too. And there we go, we've got our finished fruit. So we've got this lovely banana, apple and lime. And that is using the first sort of technique, which is just drawing it in, getting all your shading and practice and all that. I'm now going to show you a different technique to use technique we are going to do um, is one where we're going to practice drawing with our rubber. Um, so for this one I want you to cover your whole page with charcoal. If you've got a big one like this then it's ideal. If you don't then you can just use a normal charcoal. just use my old rag to sort of smudge it all in and that'll help you with some of the coverage as well. I'll do another little layer just over the top like this and I'll give it another wee rub in. Um, I'm going to use my rubber now and I want you to draw it in just using this. So we're going to start with the apple um, and you might not get this right first time but you don't have to. Um, I'm going to just mark it in a little bit like that um, and then you can rub out the bits that are really really light as well. So for example right the way down this side is really really light. Um, around the back here. Um, but this side is still quite dark, so I'm going to leave that dark. Uh, the banana sort of comes out the side here, like this, but the bottom bit's quite dark. 
seam and then round this side as well. So you can line up like that and then line up like that. And that bit's really dark at the bottom there. Um, and then just start rubbing out any other highlighted bits. So this bit up here is quite dark, quite light. Um, and then there's a wee lightness in here, shining through. And then the line sits on top, like this. And this side is really light. Now if your rubber gets too dark, you can always rub it on um, another surface. The back of a chair or something is always quite good. Um, and just it cleans it a little bit if you need some more layers going on. This is a great exercise for really practicing darks and lights and you can do it with anything, it doesn't have to be fruit. Now once you've got your main bits of highlight in there, um, now's your chance to go back in with your charcoal and you can add some layers back on. So try and avoid just going over everything all the time. Try and really, really look at things and see how they're working. Yeah, so you can darken down like this bit at the bottom. If your charcoal all starts breaking apart, it's absolutely fine. Embrace it. <laughs> you might end up with wee bits where you don't want them, but I think it's part of the fun of it. Yeah, and this side of the apple, so dark. And you might leave some of the bits just as normal as they were as well um, from your initial coverage. You could draw in the back line as well. Go. Oh, I'm liking this. Um, if you want to get your shadows in as well, so I'm going to get my cast shadow. This one doesn't work quite as well with compressed charcoal. Um, you do kind of need willow charcoal to do this one. Um, but you can definitely give it a bash. It will, it will work a little bit, just not quite as well. And got a bit more of a shadow around this side. Like this. Um, and a wee bit more coming out. Just a just a hint. Now it's almost like a kind of negative image. Um, I love working like this. It adds so much more texture. Um, and you can still smudge certain bits if you want. If it's looking too harsh. Sort of dab bits in. little hints coming through, for example if you wanted to cross hatch a little bit. And this bit down here is a little bit darker as well. So I'm just adding a little final touches. I don't think I want to go too far with this. Sometimes it's known when to stop as well. There we go. Um, right, one last little highlight coming through. And a little bit up there. Let's just make sure our line's got plenty. There we go, all done. So this is your second um, look at the state of my hands. You should have your hands like this as well um, after the end of a charcoal session. Um, but yeah, this is, you've got your two different types of pitcher. The, the same thing, but done slightly different. Um, hopefully you can see those together there. Um, yeah, so they're just slightly different. I personally prefer this one. I think that works really, really well. Um, but I have a go at both and let me see how you get on. If you can put any pictures up on social media, we'd love to see them.